Okay, so we are live. Welcome to our second part of the masterclass pop up photo film. My name is Katja Pratschke. I'm one of the three curators. With me is Gustav Hanos, and in Hamburg, Thomas Tode. Yeah, and uh, I will welcome you in the name of the Concrete Narrative Society, which is uh, organizing events on photo film since 2006. We did several classes and uh, lectures, uh, a book in 2010, and we are preparing a new book this time in English uh, for next year. Uh, I would like also to welcome you on behalf of the Haus der Fotografie in Hamburg, who is hosting this uh, event. And especially, I would like uh, to thank the curators uh, Ingo Tauporn and Matthias Schöneboimer. And, and last but not least, thanks to Neustadt Kultur, who is financing this event. And I have the pleasure, of course, to present our guests or the artists for today. This is Romeo Grünfelder from Hamburg. Will, yeah, please say something that the people can see. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Paul De Noya from uh, Holland, from Netherlands. Hello. Hello, yeah. it's me. <laughs> and uh, Menno. Yeah, that De is uh, that is me. And uh, of course, I think uh, also we'll welcome to all the guests from all over the world, from India to Brazil. It's worth to talk in English to have this international uh, public. And uh, before I forget, I would like to thank our two technicians, Christian and Ranav, because we always forget that at the end. And so they are uh, doing a very uh, complicated job. And thank you to both of you that it, you made it possible that we can talk this way. Okay, so Katja will tell something about the rules of today. Yeah, so as we are live streaming and uh, are on Zoom, I would just like to remember for everybody who is new today with us, uh, for the audience on Zoom, please make sure to keep your microphone muted so it does not interfere during the presentation and talks. During the presentations, videos of the artist will be shown please select active speaker view in order to switch to a larger video window. For the audience on Zoom, when you have a question or something you would like to say, you can raise the hand function located in the participant panel or write your question in the chat. So yesterday in the discussion, everybody was asking the question directly by raising the hand. This was actually very nice. Um, so there will be time for discussion and question after the presentations of the artists. The masterclass will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube for people following via live stream. If you have any questions to the artists, please write them in the Facebook chat of the Facebook page Photofilm. I will moderate the questions both here on Zoom and on Facebook. We will publish the live stream on our YouTube channel and our web page. The name of the web page is uh, to move or not to move that the for our audience on zoom that means that you will be visible. Um, if your camera is on if you do not wish to be seen on the recording that we will publish later, please put your camera off. Yeah, and uh, the schedule is very simple. It is uh, 45 minutes with Romeo. We are starting with Romeo at this time, then 25 minutes Q&A. Then we will have uh, 10 to 15 minutes pause. And uh, then we go on with Paul and uh, Menno de Noia. Also 45 minutes for presentation and 25 minutes for the Q&A. Okay, Gustav will give us some, uh, supply some information about uh, Romeo. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, nothing special <laughs> or anything new. Romeo Grunfeder from Hamburg is a filmmaker and artist. In his works, paranormal photographs are seemingly supernatural. Phenomena are contrasted with everyday experiences through which a supposed casualty between these contagious elements is evolved. His work have been shown and garnered awards at exhibitions as well as at international film and media festivals. We met already yesterday and started to talk about this uh, 
a very interesting, seemingly a supernatural para. Um, what is this para Normal. paranormal phenomena? And um, uh, I just found out that is a, a real challenge for us, um, for Thomas Kajani. We are working with still images in the kinematographic context. And as we learned yesterday from Romeo, uh, the interesting part of the part of uh, part of phenomenal uh, of this phenomenon of photography of thoughts that um, that there is no movement in the series of um, that series series. So um, so this is one thing that uh, that he can uh, seemingly photograph his thoughts, but on the other hand, there is no movement. That means that he cannot think of movement. He can. He can produce images of his thoughts, but uh, he cannot see or cannot think movement. It's just as opposite to me. I can remember and think of movement, but I cannot photograph my thoughts. A uh, contrast to this, uh, we learned that Romeo Grunfelder also um, reconstructing photographs in a filmic where the still image is absent and everything is moving so it is rather the the stillness in his work is rather conceptual so welcome Romeo Grunfelder please the floor is yours well, first of all Gustav thank you very much for your kind words uh, I appreciate it much as you uh, how it compressed the the evening yesterday uh, thank you very much also thank you very much to um, Thomas and Katya all the stuff in the background to make the things happen and um, yeah I uh, just like to announce uh, before that I would like to uh, encourage all people to turn the cameras on so then I can better control if my speech is that boring that people are knocking uh, out or are uh, sleeping however if you are uh, feel comfortable with it uh, turn your camera on I would appreciate it very much at least uh, due to the fact that I have something like a response from the people I'm staring on. So <clears throat> today um, it's maybe more or less uh, paranormal. So good luck to uh, Gustav. He hasn't complained about senseless and meaninglessness. So I ontology, I called it an ontology. Due to the fact that it wasn't um, it wasn't yet planned or it wasn't uh, that uh, concepted um, as you would maybe um, uh, um, as you would plan a, a series or something or like a yeah like a series, um, I got different approaches to towards this uh, film anthology. Um, the first one was very um, very simple. It was a technical um, issue. Um, since filmmaking costs a lot of money, a lot of effort, um, I'm, I was uh, looking for a way to produce film without um, invest big money, invest um, a, let, a lot of technical knowledge. So I, uh, when I started the, the series, um, uh, 35 millimeters was just going down and the digital came up. So it was clear that I could use kind of easily 35 millimeters for whatever for small money and so I started for myself and with whatever it was um, you get you got uh, these times you got a film um, almost for free due to the fact that uh, in almost all film productions they have rests of uh, of, uh, of uh, unexposed film so I, I use this uh, this uh, systematic to do experiments on um, or with film or in film or uh, with a medium, which uh, wouldn't be maybe that easily funded as I experienced with my project before. Anyway, some uh, of these uh, fragments of the anthology have been funded anyway. So 
um, I got some, always some, some uh, small money, but I, I, actually it was very important for me to um, get independent from this kind of, I don't know if I would say industry, but uh, from this dependent, first of all. Uh, second, uh, or the, the third actually, uh, is uh, just to experiment with uh, uh, the medium, which wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be normally funded due to the fact that um, actually, if you try to get fund, you have to describe what are you doing. And as you know, from scientists and from all other experimentators, some experiments lead to some conclusions or to some solutions which you wouldn't get into one term or into a, a precise definition in, uh, in advance. So I recognize or I discovered during my process or during this kind of conception that I got to an idea which I never would have thought about in, in, uh, in the beginning. And uh, today, so um, we, uh, we have a um, presentation from three of these fragments out of this anthology. Till now we have, or I, I got finished uh, five of 10. I, I thought it, 10 would be maybe a good, good, uh, a, a good number. Maybe it would be 12 or uh, will be uh, uh, 13, whatever. As side mark, I get a little bit stuck with the fifth, after the fifth, I, I don't get really into the stuff as deep as I would like to, uh, because I need a lot of whatever. Always and often with the, with some readings. So it's, it's hardly, or uh, it's, it's, it's uh, not hardly, it's, it's, it's um, very deep inspired by readings. For instance, the first film from Lacan, Jacques Lacan, and uh, due to this fact, you need time and into uh, next ideas, which I would like to, to, um, to realize in the, in the future. So, um, I um, jump over the, the first screen, Horowakui. There's also a book, but I would like to talk about the book to the film anthology afterwards. I would like to present the first project. It wasn't really the first project. The first project was another film, but uh, the first project for today is an objet, a French title. The title was um, invented by Paul Nouget. And uh, Paul Nouget uh, was kind of the mastermind of uh, surrealism, Belgium surrealism. He was kind of group, or he was the kind of uh, uh, um, uh, thinking, uh, a theorist and, and, and a, uh, the brain of the uh, surrealist Belgian group around uh, uh, René Magritte and Maisons and uh, others. And uh, he, he always gives the, whatever, the right words uh, to Magritte and his his concept of surrealism. Um, for short words, the surrealistic way of, of these photographs, so Nouget has also done just 19 photographs in his whole life, um, which have been presented at 1968. They have been produced at 1929 till 1930 uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, have never been shown until some um, Curators have shown it in uh, exhibition in uh, Centre Pompidou and others, other locations. So uh, these photographs um, relate to something which could be called the surrealistic concept of uh, montage. As I for, for, forgive me, my my uh, very reduced and compressed um, uh, explanation to surrealistic uh, uh, concept, but. The combination of contradictory stuff produces something like maybe Gustav would like to, to, to use the term sense or meaning, but the contradiction between day and night, for instance, in, in pictures of uh, René Magritte, constitutes something which is which is hardly to describe in logical in logical relations. It's just contradictory and describable. So this kind of combination was always something which um, intrigues me. So 
the first thing what I would like to show is the origin, which um, intrigues me uh, a lot. Intriguing means also in relating to Roland Barthes, the punctum, it has something which goes deeper or beyond what I would uh, would learn when I uh, would like study or if I would study the, the, the concept of, of how it's being produced or what, what he's thinking about. It was just th uh, something which strikes me immediately. So maybe some pictures are striking you too. So I would like to show you some pictures of this or I show you all 19 and then we came back to the, we'll come back to the uh, one which I use as base for, my movie. So I try to give Bildschirm free, however I, it works. If it doesn't work, you yeah, have to say something, but I think we have some practice in this. So I started with, uh, it's not very good. Oh, for a bit more. Okay, so this is the, f f okay. As I told it, uh, uh, the even the series of uh, Paul Nouget is calling Subversion des Images, but uh, my title is Subversion the image is a different uh, and the difference we will talk about later this pictures uh, starting with this um, this is uh, um, the housewife from uh, um, the wife from uh, René Magritte Georgette uh, you see the reference to Louis Bunuel um, um, and others I just flip through. There are some not very spectral things, but if you if you uh, if you would talk about the tiles, uh, there have been some references which mark the the combination of contradictions which I uh, declared before. So this is maybe the thought. It's, it's uh, something like uh, a mirroring scene. It's not very precise, but you will see it uh, afterwards. Uh, what what I'm talking about. It's not very, maybe this is not very typical um, um, surrealistic style, but actually um, together with the title, uh, they use a lot of contradictional games. This is for instance, the jongleur en rêve. This is the dreamer who, who, who did uh, um, who, um, this, this gameplay. This is the poet, the, uh, it's a reference to the poor poet. In the, in the attic. This is something which we saw yesterday too, this is a reference to spirit photography. Actually, it's a very old uh, idea that uh, in clothes there are still spirits of the people who won, who have, uh, who won uh, the, the clothes. Another uh, mirroring scene. These are kind of typical, more typical pictures. This is the picture which I want to refer afterwards. It's called uh, Naissance d'un objet. Actually, you see here, I don't know if you see that, this is René Magritte, his wife, and this is uh, uh, Missens, and this is, uh, as I thought, it's Nujit himself. It's the mirroring beyond the mirror. This is another picture I, we would like to come, um, we would like to refer uh, in the end or uh, after the next. Here we have, uh, um, again, something uh, some some small reference to to magic or to the uncanny or to something like uh, um, paranormal. These two guys. Um, the the title is the uh, le buffet. Uh, the, the 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 drinkers, right? They are. Um, how to say if you if you click your glasses together to to say santé or something. This is what they are doing. This is another picture hanging the, the, the could you help me some in English, the mantle, the mantle? The coat. 
the code. Hanging the code in the in the empty space. So anyway, this is the picture which I would like to refer. I, I, I saw the picture and I thought, what is it exactly? What what intrigues me? So um, I I was pretty intrigued by the time shift. Time shift means that they are staring to something which could have been on the wall, maybe something like a frame or pictured frame or frame picture um, or a fly, or maybe there is a fly, but we don't see it exactly what they are staring. So the, the time shift is more what I'm into in and uh, into. And uh, I thought, what is it exactly what they are staring on? And I first, I, I didn't want to, to describe it more than I saw and try to uh, organize some film screening. We build up a scenery in the gallery and we actually, the, uh, the, the, the set was a, a part of an exhibition in a gallery, in a Berlin gallery. Um, and uh, we shot the scenery with five um, actors. And uh, maybe I don't want to don't want to tell more about that than you will see in the embedded video, which I would like to ask Rana for Christian for to to um, to, to insert. Rana, Christian, did you uh, do you hear me? Okay. But the, uh, you can unshare you unshare your desktop. Sorry, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Vier, fünf, da hast du ja jetzt schon was. Ja, also ich würfel noch mal. Oder die vier. Wow. wow. Gut, toll. Na, das war aber echt Glück. Mhm. Drei, vier. Hm. Fünf. Ah. Sehr gut. Jetzt bin ich dran. To, you, to see it in full time yeah. modus, you have to, to set the yeah, picture yeah. on the uh, speaker view, mm -hmm. okay? Good, yeah. Is normal. What is this? Just uh, discover, uh, discovered it uh, before. What is this then? What is it? Just leave off. Pay attention. Ich glaube, das bewegt sich. It's moving. Das war doch vorhin noch nicht da. Nein. Keine Ahnung. It wasn't there before. Uh, no, no idea. Yeah. We would have seen it. It's fascinating to, to see, to observe. What are you seeing? Strange, pretty strange. There before, it's unbelievable. No idea, I haven't seen it before. What is this? 
Wo ist sie? Unheimlich nicht. Uncanny. Hm. Ich will wissen, was es ist. Meinst du das da? I would, I would like to know what it is. You, you mean that? I've never seen something like that. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's not possible that it exists. I don't know. I don't believe it. Here we are. Everyone hear me or yeah okay um i don't want to bother you what you've seen but um regularly people say or, or for instance my nephew said it's a completely uh it's a bad joke something like that it's it's just like um uh, joking about people or laughing about people um, doing films like that where nothing could be seen and just uh, behave like there was something or there is something. So as I told before, uh, the temporality uh, of this picture was kind of striking me. So I started filming and uh, suddenly I um, suddenly I uh, recognized that I uh, discovered something into my picture, which is related to this picture, but afterwards I after we shot it or after uh, during the shootings uh, we we um, we uh, it's kind of an eye opener i tried to get this uh, picture the still picture on the screen and how do i do that i do it live i'm here in just a few minutes a few seconds Maybe it should be prepared better, but actually I will try to, no, nope. Excuse me, but um, it's kind of important to see the still again. Still. I just, I just show you the still that you, uh, if you see the still, you would recognize it easily. Um, let me see if I could do it easily, and uh, here we go. You see something? Yes. Okay, so we see still of the movie. Um, and uh, as I told before, I don't want to bother you asking you or uh, everybody if we, uh, have maybe a, a different thinking of, of, of what, what is seen. I will uh, uh, spoil the, the, uh, the whole thing. What you're seeing is uh, something like the midpoint of the movie. If you cross the, the lines from edge to edge, you will see that here where my cross is, is the midpoint. 
So what does it tell me? What's the meaning, as Gustav would ask, what's the meaning of this midpoint? So any uh, uh, midpoint wouldn't be uh, very interesting, but actually midpoint is uh, a topos of construction and not of something which is seen. And the midpoint is actually um, also something which we know from Lacan's theory. If I can stop this, I can stop this and I'm able to show you this, but there is nothing. Why is there nothing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. Why is it there? Okay. So, um, the midpoint is, is um, related to something which uh, calls also vanishing point. Midpoint is something which uh, constructed by the subject or the viewer who, who looks into uh, with a camera, with a framing into the world. So this is kind of in Lacan's the theory, it's a geometrical point. As the vanishing point is something what he called the Lichtpunkt. The vanishing point is always um, as imagined as object a small e in the outside, the outer world, the, the seen not reachable point, the vanishing point, which uh, vanished. So uh, what you're seeing is kind of a vanishing point, or you, you thought it's a vanishing point, uh, which is not there, not present. But actually what you're seeing is that you are being seen in the setting of the tableau. As you see, you have been set as a visible object in the tableau before you got something like the subjective perspective towards the object. If you would have been in the visible world or in the tableau, you wouldn't have been seen. If you have a crossing, a conjunction of these uh, two things, it's like this. Lacan called it the gaze. You are embedded in the gaze and the subject of the representation is your mind or something like uh, you called uh, subject, but the subject is subverted or is uh, um, anyhow um, embedded in something which called the gaze. And what you see or what you saw in the picture before is that the people are doing as you are doing when you are looking to a picture, you are constructing out of your view something in the world without any doubt or without any consciousness that you have to be set into the world before you can construct something like in the world. So it's a vice versa and you as Spectre are, maybe you can simplify that in that way, you're, um, you are the one which is looked at by the represented actors in the picture um, so that one can say they are looking on the point which is uh, constructed the you or the subject. I don't know if you got that clear, but actually it's a uh, related um, kind of, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's related to, to Lacan's theory. And if, you, if you're uh, diving more into, um, maybe it would be more clear the, uh, the um, um, relationship to this thinking. Anyway, if, if there are any questions, you can also ask uh, afterwards. But actually, uh, the, the intriguing moment, what I uh, thought was that, um, anyway, the, the picture is uh, gone. So, hmm. oh. Where is it? So this one. Do you see that picture, the still? Hello? Not yet. Not yet. Is there anybody out there? OK, <laughs> nobody out there. I tried to open this again. Why is it? So, okay, I tried it again. Second. Oh, sorry. Should be better prepared, but actually I try to. So if you stare once again on this picture, 
you see the center of this is there there you think as uh, i would um, i would claim that gustav is uh, uh, our talk yesterday relates to exactly this you if you are a spectator you're always looking for some meaning some coincidence something in the picture as represent uh, represented uh, uh, representation and the representation could not be declared in in that systematic or in that conceptual uh, thinking of subjectivity which construct before any representation it's nothing to go back it's nothing which goes back to an origin it's just a representation uh, which is working as a trap you're going into the picture and you're looking as they are looking but actually you're looking to yourself you are constructing the picture and you are constructing anything like uh, midpoint and the framing and so do the uh, the representants uh, in the in the frame so um i will stop here um the uh, very very simplified uh, um, 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 explanations of eye and gaze or uh, sight and gaze in relation to uh, um, subjectivity and the objects a small a i uh, try to go further with the bildschirm freigabe as uh -huh. interesting oh my so you see me again and we um go ahead with the something not this we're going ahead with something where we started before this one Okay. Here we go. Next movie would relate to this picture, as I told you before. Um, you can also uh, question what's what's the meaning or what's the what's the um, the narrative of this movie, or this, uh, sorry, not this movie, this picture. The picture shows just an arm pointing out of, uh, uh, of the frame. And uh, the intriguing moment for, to me was that um, um, the uh, thinking, the diegetic uh, thinking out of the box or out of the frame should lead to something which could be described also in filmic matter. So what what is it? what uh, um, what frames film and what is it what uh, could be pointed out and um, i try to uh, to refer to this mm, to this uh, picture but not just reenact this picture i try to uh, ask the question i've asked uh, just before and i would like to um, ask now ranaf and christian to start the next movie bra polaroid So, okay, here we go. Uh, one has to say,
So I, I um, or do you see the still? Yeah, we see that. Yeah, we see. Okay. You see, so I just have a look on on the on the uh, clock, so I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm out of time. So I would like to um, um, make it short. Uh, this uh, picture uh, was shown on the on uh, Polaroid. Is the picture which is developing, uh, or the uh, picture which is developed is just shown during the filming, and in the picture uh, which is de uh, developing is also the next picture which is developed so the developing of the developed picture which is filmed and in so on so on so on so on it's a, a reiteration an endless reiteration which doesn't fix anything uh, original it's just a reference to what i talked yesterday the reiteration uh, the endless reiteration which um, exactly um, liberate the upright search of the origin it's contradictory it's it's uh, the the opposite it's exactly the iteration of the independence of picture or the picture uh, how would you say the imaginary which doesn't relate to anything original it doesn't relate to any narrative who has to occupy pictures or you have to to rule pictures as a story or uh, to to resolve something like story so it's very, I think it's uh, more wrong than right what I'm uh, describing just right now, but maybe you get a little bit uh, insight of um, uh, what I'm talking about uh, when I'm talking about temporality. It's no no uh, temporality which said as it was. It's a temporality which uh, uh, gets independent from something like an Aristotelian thinking of uh, a time in steps and uh, a time as a repeatable possibility uh, to go into back uh, past or future. Anyway, uh, the, the, uh, do I get some five minutes or would it be okay? You're fine. You, are, you have uh, 10 minutes left. Really? Oh, that's good. That's very good. Okay. I thought uh, uh, um, 40. Okay. So, uh, very good. So um, what we're talking now is this one. Does everybody see in the title, the blah polar, polar right, now, right now? Maybe yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this was the picture. Uh, the last one, what I would like to uh, talk about was, uh, no, no, this is still, we've talked about the uh, reiterations without uh, uh, iteration of the first of the principle, not, no iteration or no um, recapitulation um, onto something which called original or authorship or something uh, be stopped in one and maybe um, very important reading for me was lying onto this kind of meaning out of this. and it clears up something we go ahead the third thing, uh, the third film, which I would like to present is uh, the fourth into the anthology called um, Sorcière Chaponais and relies to photographies or a series, The Park, shot in 1971 till 1979. It was shot with infrared film and uh, shows uh, sceneries in a uh, Tokyo park where uh, couples are making whatever love or making uh, and others are observing them as voyeurs. Um, it's not very clear uh, due to the fact that uh, Yoshi Yuki, the photographer, uh, always also used staged uh, um, uh, moments or also use uh, actors for his his fashion photography, but sometimes it's uh, it could be a kind of a, a um, a documented scenery, but sometimes it looks uh, kind of overdone. You see the park, it's dark, and the infrared camera, maybe he has also used light, but the infrared camera shows very precise. The people hanging around, it's kind of a contact, uh, a contact uh, a place, a contact park where people meet and make love. And so, 
this series was was um, was an inspiring moment to me to think about what is it was what the desire to see arouses. And remember what, what I said before, it was always uh, my goal to, or my, my purpose to, uh, or the purpose of the film series was always to experiment with, um, with um, questions which couldn't be handled in something like a storyboard or a screenplay. It's kind of a questioning, questioning the media. And if you are going to cinema, you have expectations that you see something like what an emotional um, would get to me, uh, well, uh, from what you get an emotional impact. And the same was for me, what is it? What kind of power does film have or what kind of power is cinema uh, which arouses this kind of expectations that you longing to see something? You are you're, you 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 would like to have something like a uh, direction. So I would like to ask uh, Rana and Christian to um, to uh, start the last last excerpt.
So here we are. Um, last movie for the uh, for tonight of the series. What you seen was um, reference to um, this uh, park uh, uh, sequence of um, Yoshiyuki, and um, I always refuse to watch or to show this film on video due to the fact that it's not transmittable. Or trans uh, the transfer to video doesn't work in relating to the effect I would like to uh, provoke. The effect is that if on film, if you have on film, on, on, on physical film, you have a, um, a black, there is in projection no light going through the film onto the screen. And uh, if you don't have light on the screen, the public would sit into the cinema without watching anything but the screen, nothing more. So what you see uh, in this film is a digital version, a digital version of black is always light. You have no light in, or you have no no light in, in digital world. You have always, even the blackest black is light. Uh, the pixel have to have an electronic um, currency or electronic um, tension. So it's not possible to show it or to refer to it on, on digital media. But in film, you have no light going through the lens, through the film, through the um, positive onto the screen. So what does it mean? If somebody's uh, sitting in the, in the cinema, it's longing to see what are they doing here? What are they seeing in a realistic way? You would like to see what um, satisfy your, your uh, search or your questioning. And in the end, what you see is nothing as the pure screen, which is cinema itself. You are expecting to see something which called system cinema. And the system cinema is something which is whatever comprised out of uh, the architecture, the screen, the projector machinery, but actually you are sitting and watching something which you won't see if you, if you wouldn't have or if you if you uh, you have always uh, light uh, during the uh, movie or you, uh, in, in most movie you have light uh, and you have pictures you have representation of of pictures or a representation of of people and so on on the screen but you would never think during the film about what is the whatever the, what is, what is basic what is the background what what is beyond film and the screen is something which you which allows projection and the cinema is kind of a machinery which allows and, and uh, arouses projection uh, fantasies and projection def uh, desires. Um, and so, so this is uh, the end of my speech. I think I'm kind of in time. I think I'm three, uh, three minutes over. So forgive me for this very, very compressed and maybe too simplified thing. But anyway, you have a possibility to ask questions. And thanks anyway for uh, joining this session. I would like to make some commercial insert for Paul de Noyer. They are coming afterwards, so uh, keep on running. And if you have questions after this session, so let us talk. Is there any? Actually, maybe it was too precise what I declared. So no questions yeah. are open. So you you, you won't. Well, moment. Uh, well, no no question, but one remark, mm -hmm. which I appreciated. That was the the the, the arm or a hand with the Polaroid, and in the Polaroid, the Polaroid. Image, because she's moving. The image. Or he. Yeah. Or she, no, it's a she. It, it's a she. That's it, interesting. It's a she, right? It's interesting that you, yeah, it's, it's actually it's a she. And it's another story. I could I could tell uh, or I could I could uh, um, recapitulate the antidote how we, we are looking for uh, actors um, who could do and asking for just for the arm, uh, arm casting. And we have five actors, they couldn't do it three minutes long. And it was the... Uh, and she's no actress and nothing at all, but she, she, she shakes it and shakes and shakes it. Anyway, I, I'm, I guess what you are onto or after, 
shaking Polaroid is kind of senseless or useless. You don't have to shake Polaroid. The Polaroid doesn't have to be shaked. So it's just a common, whatever, misunderstanding of, of uh, Polaroid uh, photo taking. It's no use to shake the uh, Polaroid. But I, I like the, the, whatever, I like the cliche as a trap. You're looking onto something which you, ah, this is Polaroid. And so you get trapped maybe by the, by the representation of Polaroid. So anyway, I, I, um, Gustav, you want, would, I, I just interrupt you. No, you didn't. Maybe this is just my internet connection. So what I was trying to say that I appreciated the moving image. You know, <laughs> that, okay. that she moved the image. The movement. And, and yeah, she, yeah, she moved. moved Definitely. The image. So Definitely. this somehow relates to our Talk, yes, basic thing. Yes. The still image is moved. Yeah, you're sometimes interrupted. I don't know if anybody has the same experiences, but uh, Katja and Gustav are sometimes interrupted. I don't get everything what you talk. Okay, so anyway, I maybe uh, I, I got it that you like the movement. Yeah, thanks. Any any other questions or any more remarks? I don't know if, if, if you... Yeah, for example, sure. if we start with the first film, it's about this uh, center focus, uh, the film, it's about yeah. perspective. And I have the impression all your films are about the conditions of seeing. So as you yesterday, you used another term, you, you have spoken about the a priori, the a priori right. we bring with us, with, with yeah. which we construct a film or in the yeah. last film, the expectations, the projections we have yeah. you know, this uh no, sexual uh, situation and so on yeah, so yeah, it is design. about constructing images and uh, and films and uh, the conditions of seeing and that is what relates to the to photo film i think because we always uh, claim that photo film is deconstructing the classical film into a photo sound uh, uh, talk and so on and thinking about the con the conditions of seeing so is mm. this something which uh, which appeals to you which um, um I, i've read your, your text in your book and i read also the, uh, the text of katya and, and gustav so uh, i agree with uh, the the um, the uh, pro or the the how would you say the um, i agree with something you're searching with photo film what differentiates my thoughts or my um, my approach was that I um, I always felt that photo film or anyway if you have film or if you are film something you have always to do with representations and this kind of representations you will won't come out of this trap you won't you, you can't destroy or uh, disassemble these kind of uh, um, this kind of uh, imaginations which you uh, give in the picture. So I, my approach was just to ask for the condition in a non, how would you say non-conditional way? It's a contradiction, but actually uh, what is seeing? The seeing uh, relies on the subject and the subject isn't seen in the picture. So what is it or how could you construct something around it's the wrong word and uh, inside outside as maybe n said yesterday was n i don't know yeah here and murray the inside out the conscious which which constructs something outside uh, body or inside body uh, maybe this is all uh, always um, a trial to define something which couldn't be described with non-significant terms because as like lacan said you have the imaginary you have just pictures to describe the world you don't have other things if you if you knock your head against a wall without knowing that there is a wall then you relate to something which Lacan would tell uh, would, would talk uh, would, would call uh, the real and the symbolistic is the third uh, uh, entity and uh, the problems which I have with photo film is that the photo itself in photo film is always a representation of photo. It's not, even if you show a photo, it's, it's film. It's just a, a, a transmission, it's, it's translation into film because every photo you show in film has 24 pictures in the second. Or even if you, if you for Paul Inouye, Inouye has uh, only 
two pictures in, in, in a second, maybe. Anyway, but actually you have, you, you can't leave the concept of movement image. And I would like to leave movement image to go ahead to time image. Time image is another concept than moving image, um, movement image, sorry. We have to be precise because Deleuze is very precise in that moment. He doesn't talk about moving image. He talks about movement image. That's a pretty important difficult, uh, uh, difference. Sorry for long explanations. I think everything is said, no? <laughs> yeah, are there any questions from the audience? You know, questions in the chat? Yeah, so, Sarah, 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 Sarah would like But to. you must unmute your, Sarah, you must unmute. I'm, I'm but really maybe really Sarah- In the wrong place. I was doing it in the wrong place. place. To somebody else. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, okay. Right. I was doing it on my picture and not- <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm interested because I've done restaging of tableaus from still photographs, so I'm interested to cross. And I understand this concept about the Deleuze, the still, the, the um, movement image and the time image. And I suppose I tended to think that time image is where a, a reenacted image almost stays almost still. And that is that the movement is not, um, doing anything other than what we already have in the still image it's not doing much it's not it's not furthering a story or furthering a narrative it's just sort of hovering but we still have a sense of the still image but obviously there's a lot of different ways i can't see you now i can't see the person talking never mind who was just talking um so i don't know where you've gone um <laughs> Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I, sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying. I'm oh, sorry. I was just trying to ask what you'd said about still image and the moving image. And I, I, I wasn't here yesterday, so I missed that discussion. So maybe I can't come in, but I'm kind it of- It doesn't relate much. You said you had some question about photo film and I, you were saying something. I'm missing a lot. I don't know whether it's every time you move the hands, but I'm missing chunks. I've just put it in the chat. I'm missing chunks of um, what's being said. And I missed something what you said just now even about the photo film and precisely what that was. So um, okay. I, I, I wondered you, what your you... question was about photo film and what, um, yeah. So sorry about that. So um, I don't know exactly if I got you right, but um, perhaps I could just say I'm interested to know more about. What oh, make, let, 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 me, let me describe. Let, let me describe this way. Um, photo film, if it if it's used as photo film to, st to tell something like meaning or a sense, or if you tell a narration with cuts. So you use, uh, that's a difference between a very simplifi uh, simplified uh, version of uh, uh, the difference between movement image and time image. If you use the cut to narrate something, even with photos, with a stage person, whatever, if you use the cut to put one picture after the another to get something like a narration or get something like a sense or understanding of, of, a, of a subject. Then you're in a moving image, in a very traditional movement image yes. uh, yes. Uh, way, due to the fact that you use the cut and the cut is just, yes. just giving you the structure. If you are in time image, you have the opposite way or uh, the way uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, reverse yeah. so you use the pictures to um liberate cuts or other way uh, you um uh, you um, you um cut to arouse or to to arise a uh, um, narrative for instance if you have like in in um um surreal um uh, art if you have two pictures put together, um, then you got the imagination that uh, these two stages don't have to do something with each other. They are don't they don't rely on, but actually sometimes it's almost, as you would say, maybe reliable, but uh, it's almost it's very, very, uh, intriguing that it's uh, produced something like a contradictory. And if you 
don't use the cut to tell narration, but you use narration to, uh, to, to, uh, to liberate cuts, then you got a variety and a lot of more options which depend on the cut itself. And this maybe uh, depend on what I called yesterday the virtuality of time. It's a, a temporal thing that if you have something um, like a, a cut which doesn't rely on a narrative, but we uh, uh, the other way around. So you are always thinking about what is the sense of or what is the combination as telling or what is what is the, the narration behind it? It could be like that, could be like that. It could be more narration than just one. If you, in Hollywood, for instance, it's exactly the other way. You cut a story to have emotional effects because you want, uh, the, the goal is to get to reach these emotional effects. Um, and um, well. So, Thomas, I think Romeo is frozen. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> uh, see, he's frozen. He's so. even gone. Yeah. So, just wanted to introduce Sarah uh, to our audience. We, we made the masterclass with Sarah in September at the Museum of Photography uh, Berlin. And uh, Sarah was, of course, in London. And uh, Sarah did uh, two films where she restaged photographs of um, Claude Cachin and, um, and worked with the text of Claude Cachin. And uh, what you did is actually worked also with Tableau Vivant, yeah, tableau. The, the, the prolonging of this, of the photograph in form of Tableau Vivant. And it's a very important work and absolutely worth taking a look also on the webpage of Sarah and uh, also in our uh, uh, to move or not to move.de, there's the recorded masterclass and also excerpts of uh, Sarah's work. Actually, there's some connection between you and Romeo, because both is, uh, of course, uh, coming from the surrealist uh, time, and both of you are staging. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is, and actually, I love those photographs that Romeo is working from, and I'm kind of really become familiar. So I've a risen affinity, and obviously, my interests take it slightly. So, you know, but th yes, there is exactly, yeah, 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 and also the reenactment, yeah. the restaging is uh, yeah. very similar yeah. of course and but yeah. he's um, the, the, it's around this one uh, single shot the surrealistic shot but yeah, you give time to it no? and, yeah. and when, uh, when i was doing mine and i did a lot i found that i was everyone they're all different things so it's not a, a comparison but for what i was doing it was important for me often i felt that the photographs the, the tableaus animated the photographs more the less I did the, the, the less um, the less movement in a sense in terms of visual movement I gave so the movement would be more with sound or light or just light or something um, like the air um, and that was for, that's just for what I was doing so it's a, it you know it's a um, so I'm interested in these different approaches, and uh, it's interesting to see how. I, um, I, you know, I love to see something being reanimated, and we can, you know, it's really, it's, it's interesting to me. Uh, he's back, Romeo. Yeah, sorry, we. Yeah, no, but uh, it's okay. But uh, I just uh, would like to um, to make the a difference um, to what what Sarah said before. Um, for me, the reenactment is just a trap, just a, um, a visual trap to get people intrigued, like I was intrigued uh, watching the uh, photographs, intrigued by a sense that um, um, people get trapped into something which they can't, and it's not even the manipulation, how I do something that the, it's more or less, Uh, he's frozen again, yeah, for you also? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Maybe so the, the best, best because, uh, Thomas, it's a quarter past six. So let's do 15 minutes break. Yeah. And come back at 6.30 with power. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So at at 6:30 we see us again we and okay. And we go on with the discussion and with so it's 6:30 is that 5:30 for Yeah, time? it's in London time. It's 15 minutes. 15 minutes pause. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, see you.